My guest today is an innovator with over 15 years experience in direct to consumer sales and is the CEO and founder of Latched and Hooked Beauty, a textured hair care brand with a mission to diversify the hair extension space. She is the first black faux hair designer to create a synthetic wig product and have it debut on QVC's live shopping network. Please welcome my friend, Tiffany Gatlin to Intimate hey. Details with Dr. Tiff. Hey. Hey, I'm, I'm so, so excited. excited. <laughs> I know. Uh, listen, I'm, look, I'm, I'm excited so excited. This makes me so happy. I'm so excited that you're here. Um, I'm so excited for the people to understand and learn about what it is you do, mm -hmm. um, latched and hooked, of course, but just yeah. all the things because you are a multifaceted, multi hyphenate yeah. entrepreneur. <laughs> and I think that, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted you on is because I feel like we all can learn so much from you, but welcome oh, thank you. to thank the you. program. Welcome, thank welcome. you so much. I, <laughs> I'm honored to be here. Thank you so much for asking me and allowing me to share with your audience. Now, see, Tiffany is is very relaxed right now and reserved, <laughs> but she won't tell you that she just spent the weekend. Hold on. We're not even going to talk about the weekend. Prior to the weekend, you and I were on Instagram going back and forth mm -hmm. about Barbie. Yeah. Yeah. Barbie, yes. Which is all the craze right now. They have, they, is. I literally feel like they have a unlimited budget, marketing budget. Because when I, I mean, tell you that they have been marketing everywhere. like crazy, you can't go anywhere without seeing something about Barbie. Yes. When I tell you, I thought the movie had already came out like a month ago <laughs> because right. I was seeing so think. much promo on it mm -hmm. a month ago that I was like, oh, it must have dropped last weekend and the movie still ain't, it's still not out. July 21st and it's it, still, and still going and they're still going. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's wild. hard. Yeah, it's wild. Hard, but yes, you had gone to, and a friend of ours, I think too, Victor Jackson was there, a friend mm -hmm. of the pod. Victor yes. Jackson was at this uh, event in Atlanta, a skating event, yep. and Tip had to throw together a last minute Barbie look, <laughs> and did. she looked amazing. Um, so the, the footage pressure. from that, Yeah, I the know, pressure. but it was so fun for me to just be on your Instagram like, oh girl, you need to wear this, you need to find this, let's find your outfit. Y'all were just was throwing out all kind of ideas, and I was like, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm not going to stress myself out about this. Honey, I yeah. was stressed out for you because I'm like, how they going to call her at the last minute and be like, hour. come on down to the Barbie Playhouse right. exactly. and come dress, do impress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was so fun for me to live vicariously through you. <laughs> it was a fun time. It really was a, a fun time. And I actually haven't done any um, like influencer events in a very long time actually like several years so it was good to be back out and about and yeah. and seeing some of my influencer friends out there so it was a good time yes well I want to get into the influencer game because that's actually what we started talking about and I'll get to that in a second but I mm -hmm. do want to talk to people about <clears throat> latched and hooked now when mm -hmm. we booked this interview I have been, so I've been rocking my natural hair for, um, well, I've been rocking my natural hair for years, but mm -hmm. I hadn't had anything in it. Usually I'll have some braids. I'll have something going on. Mm -hmm. Um, a little so natural, mutual <laughs> friend again, yes. um, I'll have something going on, but I had, I knew that I was going to go on a little vacation of my own and I needed some braids or locks or something. And I was like, Ooh, wouldn't it be nice? if my hair was locked by the time I did this interview. <laughs> and she did. And she, and did. she did. She did. And she, she did. did. So I did. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. were my inspiration for that. So let's talk about Latched and Hooked mm -hmm. and how it has become in a very short period of time, a major game changer in mm -hmm. the black hair care, not hair care, but hair product industry yeah. tell us about latch and hook for those who don't know so you know I, i'd love to start right at latch and hook but a lot of people don't know that latch and hook is actually my second beauty company okay so i actually entered into the beauty industry with my first beauty company which was called curl Colon hair collection where i created the first pre-curled and looped crochet hair on the market to prevent black women from hot water burns while protective hairstyling if you remember back in like 2015 Honey. the crochet curls was like all the rage all the girls yes. wanted this roller set look this rod set yes. look and we were literally dipping our heads in hot boiling water 
to set the the braiding hair so that we could take the the, the roller out and we could have these voluminous curls. And so uh, at that time, you know, I was an entrepreneur and I was trying to find out different ways to diversify my income. And so I went back to what I've known from years prior, and that was doing protective hairstyling. I bra- I've been braiding since I was 16 years old. And so I said, you know what, I'll just start like doing crochet hairstyles, you know, charging like hairstylists. They weren't really doing crochet hairstyles in the salon because it, it's right. a dangerous, it, it's dangerous and it's a liability because right. you got to dip that hair in hot water to get those curls to set. And a lot of the stylists and salon owners was like, no, nah, we're not, we're not doing that. That's right. a liability. Who wants to we're take not, that on? <laughs> we're not going to get sued for burning somebody with hot water. So a lot of the, the salons weren't, they learned from McDonald's, didn't they? They learned, (laughs) they learned from that hot coffee and they were just like, we don't have time. Okay. We don't have time time. for this foolishness. No. Um, And so I said, you know what, I'm going to start doing the style. I'll charge. I think I was only charging like $80 to do the style. It would take me about three to four hours to do you know, a full look or what have you. And I was just doing that on the side just to earn some extra money. But one thing that I learned while I was doing that, you know, one thing that a a black woman is going to tell you when she's sitting in that chair, you know, for all the black women who are listening, you sat in your, the salon chair, you're going to spill the tea to your hairstylist. You're going (laughs) to let her know what you like and what you don't like. Yeah. Yeah. Or you ain't coming back. Exactly. And a lot of the black women were just, you know, they were saying how, how they love the style, but they just felt uncomfortable because, you know, the dipping of the hot water, the yeah. steam, yeah. them being scared of potentially getting burned. Absolutely. And so I thought about that and that evolved into Curl Cologne, which created the curl. The curl was already uh, done for you. So it did a couple things. One, for women who didn't know how to rot, if you didn't know how to roll the hair around a rod, and that is a technique in itself. Um, mm-hmm. If you didn't know how to do that, Curl Kalan had, had you because we already had the curl done for mm-hmm. you in four different sizes. Um, and then the other thing that it did, it eliminated that um, that piece for hairstylists who wanted to do it in the salon, but didn't want, you know, the, the, the risk the and liability. the liability associated with that. So it was yeah. already done and it was a, a done for you and you could do it at home yourself, you know, mm-hmm. if you're a DIY person. And so it just took off and um, it literally became a million, a million dollar company in 10 months. Oh my God. Um, and so, you know, this story is out there. I've, I've done it a million times and people can Google and find it, but I ended up having, um, a, a bad relationship with my business partner. Um, and the only way that we could basically dissolve the company was to actually sell it. Mm. So we ended up selling the company to another, um, hair extension brand called True Glory and, uh, True Glory bought Curl Cologne and they actually still have that brand underneath their brand umbrella. And so they, um, they, you know, are currently selling. And I decided that I wasn't finished. Curl Cologne was just Mm -hmm. a stepping stone for me. I had more that I wanted to do with that brand. So I ended up starting Latched and Hooked. And when I started Latched and Hooked seven years ago, it was going to be me basically continuing the sale of the crochet hair in that, Mm -hmm. you know, because part of the sale was I could continue selling this product. Mm -hmm. Um, So True Glory would basically be, and Curl Cologne would actually be my competitor at this point. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, kudos to you, just not to interrupt you, but like kudos to you, because most people, when they do sell their company, there's a, a non-compete in there where yeah. you can't compete mm-hmm. with the brand that you just sold. Mm-hmm. But kudos to you. Yeah, I wasn't, you... wasn't going to sell with that clause. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I wasn't going to sell because I knew that I there was more that I wanted to do. And I was literally, I mean, we had only been in, in business 10 months, mm. you know, so there was so much that I wanted to do. There was so much potential in the space. There were no competitors at that time because there were no other brands, no, not even Asian brands who were selling uh, the pre curl and loop crochet hair. So the, the market was super ripe. It was open, it was wide open. And I really wanted to, to do more in that space. And so um, when I started Lashed and Hooked, I, you know, again, I was just going to sell the curl, but it became, um, 
I was so, it, it was hard because I was, again, I was competing against Curl Kalan mm-hmm. and people kept saying that I was copying Curl Kalan. <laughs> they no didn't boo. know that I was actually no the boo. creator of this, <laughs> exactly. this, this business, but it was really hard for consumers to really separate Curl Kalan and Lashed and Hooked. Mm. And so I had to find a differentiator that would set me apart from Curl Kalan. And so it just so happened that my daughter got her hair braided for the first time and she um, experienced scalp irritation and mm. she had to take her her braids out the next day. Oh. And you know how much braids are. I do. A lot. I do. <laughs> so I was I not happy that um, we had spent over $200 for braids and we had to take them out the next day. Yeah. And I personally had never- not a- it is not a negotiation at that point mm-hmm. when your it's scalp not. is on fire and the braids are itching. Mm-hmm. You there's not a lot of options. Certainly, we can soak your head in some apple cider vinegar. <laughs> we can do all the things. Which doesn't work, by the way. Right. Uh, We can try, yeah. but that itch. I mean, it will literally cause your scalp to get red, the bumps, yeah. the redness, the, all mm-hmm. the things. And all like, those, and especially yeah. for littles, like they shouldn't have to go through all of that. Mm-mm. Yeah, and it was just yeah. too much for her, you know, at that time. You know, she was, I think, nine or 10, something mm-hmm. like that. Um, and it just wasn't working. And so I personally had had never experienced scalp irritation before. So I didn't understand the level of pain that she was experiencing. But I just knew that it needed to come out. And so long story short, you know, one of the things that I decided to do was I wanted to understand how synthetic hair was made. Because even with mm-hmm. Carplon, you know, that was synthetic hair. But I didn't really understand the 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 science behind the it. science thank you the science behind how the hair was actually made and so this time around I really was interested in the science how how is synthetic hair made is it I didn't even know at that point that chemicals were actually used to create mm. the formulation of synthetic hair I don't know what I thought synthetic hair was <laughs> you know when we were growing up they used to say like right. oh it's horse hair it's yeah, you know all yeah, kind yeah. of things so I didn't know you know what it yeah. was and so <laughs> I started doing some you know some digging and some research and I found out that it, yes you need chemicals to create synthetic hair yeah. and you know most things that we use use chemicals but not everything that we use has to be um, toxic chemicals right. and this was the case with the synthetic hair that there were toxic chemicals being used to formulate synthetic hair and nobody in five decades has mentioned or said anything about you know uh, toxic chemicals being used to create synthetic hair extensions and, and we so have to my think daughter about... had this issue <laughs> yeah like, hey, well we have to think about like who is selling the product and who exactly. they care about no. like like our concerns. Um, we yeah. had, um, we've had a couple of, uh, beauty entrepreneurs and I would include you in that, in that batch of, um, guests on the podcast where there has been this opening in a market in, and mm-hmm. especially in an urban or a black market mm-hmm. where the, um, producer of the product has, th- there's been this need all this time, mm-hmm. but no one ever addressed that need or, or felt like this particular consumer um, really had, they didn't really care about our needs as consumers. Right. They were just pushing a product. And exactly. so that's what was, had been happening for years. It was like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, they'll buy it. They don't care. They're not asking mm-hmm. any questions. They're just happy to have the product. And right. that's not true. That's and not, not true. even that they don't care is that you don't know what you don't know for sure. And you don't know that you can, you don't know the questions to even ask. You just think like, okay, maybe this is just a me problem. Right. You don't, you know, synthetic hair and a lot of beauty is not regulated. So Mm -hmm. there's nowhere for you to go to even hold the discussion. And that's what the problem was. Like there was no community, no forum for black women to, go and say like hey i'm experiencing this not seven years ago now there is but you know seven years ago seven eight years ago there there were no forums to to hold these type type of discussions and and communication about our our hair really you know we were still 
very secretive about the things oh. that we used and did when, while wearing protective styles. Mm. Now, you know, women will tell you that they're wearing hair extensions. They'll right. show or you the process or whatever. Let me show you how to cut years. the lace, everything. Right. But you're so right. That it yeah. used to be a thing. Like, don't touch my hair. Not even don't touch my hair. Cause that's still a thing, yeah. but don't get up in there and touch them roots because mm. you might find a surprise in there. Like right. now, please let me know who did your hair. Mm-hmm. Did the weave? Who Black put women it are in? exchanging information. Yes. They're telling you where they got their weave from yes. they're showing you that they're wearing weave they're proud <laughs> that they're wearing weave like that what was not evolution. happening it's an evolution that was what not happening evolution. eight years ago and it? so you know when latch and hook came on the market you know my what i wanted to do was really change the narrative on a few things i wanted to change the narrative on um, the fact that black women wore hair extensions, uh, specifically protective styles, because we didn't like our hair. We didn't like mm-hmm. our hair texture. We didn't like our hair. So we, you know, put braids in there. I wanted to debunk that myth. I wanted to um, debunk the myth that uh, soaking your synthetic hair in apple cider vinegar would remove the chemical because that was not true. Um so I, I there, say that for the people in that. <laughs> my god you know there were just different things that i wanted to debunk i wanted to um i wanted black women to feel uh confident about uh their hair i wanted them to understand that beauty didn't equal pain because for so long we've had this narrative about it has to hurt in order for it to work. It has to burn, and if before you know that it's working, you know it. You you know the, the braids have to be tight for you to the know trauma. that it's good. You know the it's trauma, the trauma. we have There's put a lot of ourselves mm-hmm. through in order to look a certain way. Yeah, this is like th- we have been on multiple journeys as a people. Mm-hmm. And ha- the hair journey in the black community, I don't think there's ever been a succinct, like, um, I don't know, ancestry lineage. Like, this is amazing. Mm-hmm. What you're yeah. saying to me right now, like, we put ourselves through, we through so much trauma in our yeah. follicles through so much trauma, yeah. just because we wanted it. I, I remember, I remember, and I think Blackish did an episode on this too, like, you know, getting perms as a young girl and like, trying to leave it on as long as possible even though it's itching and it's burning and all of the things Mm -hmm. I got to leave it on as long as I possibly can so I can get it straight as I possibly can and then having scabs on your hair because it literally burns your scalp but that's what needed to happen in order for your hair to look how you wanted it to look and what you're saying is part of your creation of Latched and Hook was helping black women understand you can get the looks that you want first of all appreciate the natural texture of your hair, mm-hmm. right? But yes. you can get the looks, looks that you want without ha- that pain is not necessary. Exactly, it's not necessary to do what you're trying to do, sis. Exactly, calm down. And I and I wanted mainstream beauty people to understand that when you see a black woman again, specifically in protective styles, because that's the area that that's the niche that I'm in. But mm-hmm. When you see a, a black woman wearing protective styles, you can assume a few things about her. Okay. If let's, you have, if, if, if you see a woman wearing braids, locks, uh, crochet, these are the things that you can assume about her. She could be um, on her fitness journey. She could be. She could She's be uh, preparing for labor and delivery. She could be. She was she, not today. <laughs> she could be on her way on vacation. There you go. That's mm-hmm. where I'm living right now, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yes. Keep it she going. could be growing her hair out from a Absolutely. shorter Absolutely. a shorter look. Been there, for sure. You know? Mm-hmm. And lastly, she could just be tired. She's tired of doing her hair every day. She's tired of manipulating her hair every day. She need a break. She needs a break. She needs because a break. Because this don't calm itself. I can't Mm-mm. just run my fingers through and it's done. No, no, no. We don't wake up, shake, and go. Correct. No. Correct. <laughs> not in a black household i don't right. uh-uh yeah. yeah no that makes total sense to me yes yes so those are the things that we you know i wanted you know the beauty industry again mainstream beauty to understand about about black women is that we are we are sitting six to eight hours four to eight hours 
in in salons to get our hair done be, for various reasons. Right. None of those have anything to do with us hating our hair. Right. You know. Right. Um. And so let's change that narrative because just right. throw that out the window. And then, um, you know, and and then just again that that narrative around beauty equals pain. Like we we wanted to black women to we wanted to begin to have this conversation about you don't have to be in pain to feel beauty, mm-hmm. to look beautiful, to feel confident. Right. Um, so let's let's cut that narrative out. And so those are the conversations that we've been having for the last seven years. It, we haven't just been about, oh, buy this, this braiding hair, buy this crochet hair, buy this wig. We've really been using hair as a vehicle to drive conversations that really were not had prior to mm-hmm. Lash the Hook getting on the scene. I love it. And so you started with, with for Latched and Hooked, mm-hmm. was the first product, the crochet extensions? Yeah, the crochet curls was the first product um, that we launched. And then um, two, like a year and a half later, we introduced braiding hair. Yeah. And braiding hair is actually our number one. That's what, Braiding hair is now what we're most known for, um, is our non-toxic braiding hair. That's, that's our number one. And that, and you, if you remember earlier on, I said, God, I need to find a differentiator that yeah. differentiates Lash and Hook from Curl Clown because we're just being compared so much. And the braiding hair ended up being the thing that, that separated that the brands. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. What a, I mean, a journey. A journey. A journey. A, a journey. journey. Mm-hmm. And it happened so crazy. So it's like you you had two businesses mm-hmm. that in relatively short, I'm saying short, but yeah. especially the first one, right? Mm-hmm. Short, 10 months period of time, but then with Latched and Hooked, still a short period of time, you've mm-hmm. seen um, a crazy <clears throat> rise in success. Uh, mm-hmm. We talked about it in your intro um, that you've been recently on QVC mm-hmm. with this air. Yeah. February. How do we go? Yes. Yeah. This is a this is a lot. Kudos to you. But then, you know, and it's so wonderful to see, you know, someone who started just with an idea and understanding that I have to do differentiate myself mm-hmm. in this market. How do you get there in such a short period of time? Do you think what do you think the secret sauce is for you? Um, I think because that- clearly you have the recipe. <laughs> do I? I mean, you know, <laughs> seven years doesn't doesn't it it doesn't sound like a short amount of time. It, it feels like I haven't been doing this for long, but saying Mm. seven years, like, wow, seven years, you know, Mm -hmm. total eight, eight years in the, in the beauty industry, but seven Mm -hmm. years sounds like a long time, but it doesn't feel like I've been in this (laughs) space long enough. Um, I would say, I don't know if I have a secret sauce. Um, I'm constantly, (laughs) I'm constantly learning every day, but what I, what I do know is that I am good with connecting with consumers on a very human level. Mm -hmm. And I think I do that better than any of my competitors. So I think that that is how number one, I've been able to stay around for so long and relevant Mm -hmm. for so long and really kind of pioneer in this space is because I understand how to connect with consumers where they are. And the Mm -hmm. stories that I'm able to tell them are real. You know, they Mm -hmm. come from my household. They come from my children. They come from me. And so when I talk to consumers, they're like, yes, I I deal with that, you know, or my child Mm -hmm. deals with that or I've experienced that. And so a lot of the other brands in the space, you know, are like Asian owned brands. They don't have, again, they don't use the product. They don't have those same types of they stories. Don't have the history. Yeah. Um, and so they really can't connect, which is why a lot of those brands hire black women to work for them so that those individuals can mm-hmm. connect with the consumer because they, they know now that they don't have any relevance, any connection right. to the consumer. The and so they, they hire people who look like the consumer so that they can connect with them. Sneaky. And this is a perfect segue because what I wanted to talk to you about was the whole idea of social media influencing and the Mm -hmm. influencer and affiliate marketing. But this is, this is part of why. So some Mm -hmm. of these brands um, may not have a diverse um, backing 
right? They may not have mm-hmm. been diver- uh, created with that diversity in mind, but they need people who look like maybe their target audience um, or a diverse audience to be able to get a diverse um, customer, consumer yes. base. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you and I, uh, Tiffany and I were at a mutual friends uh, gathering a few weeks ago mm-hmm. and we just were catching up and talking and um, Tiffany mentioned that she was getting back into uh, doing more influencer marketing and, mm-hmm. and doing the things that she had been doing. And I just start, you know, we had this conversation and I'm listening to you and my wheel started turning like, oh, like, because this is the latched and hook lady. <laughs> and what is the latch and hook lady? What is she doing? Doing <laughs> influencer she marketing. Doing? Right. She what is she doing? Hooking, you know, over there. Like, no. what, is, what is she doing? What is she doing over here? Yeah. However, this is a very lucrative stream for mm-hmm. a lot of people. Yeah. And especially when it comes to women of a certain age, Mm -hmm. um, those of us that are that may be a little bit older don't necessarily understand what the girls are doing over on Mm -hmm. TikTok Mm -hmm. or on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. But we do understand there's some cash exchanging hands. It is. And for nothing more than saying, do you like these glasses? Yeah. Aren't they cute? Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you about the function and the functionality of these glasses and also where I'm got, I got them. And if you use my code and that being it or less, because Mm -hmm. you got me, you got me on a scenario where you did far less than that and still (laughs) brought home some coins. So I brought you on because I wanted to talk about my fascination (laughs) with affiliate marketing, with social media influencing. And even though, you have an incredible brand. This is mm-hmm. also a revenue stream for mm-hmm. you, which is a whole, you know, another conversation about mm-hmm. us having multiple streams of income yeah. because so many folks with or without their own brands for, for those folks, this can be very huge. So I wanted to talk yeah. about that for sure. So I actually started in the influencer marketing space in about 2010. So when I transitioned mm-hmm. That's out- That's early. Of- yeah. When I transitioned out of corporate America, I worked at Bank of America. I was an AVP at uh, Bank of America for almost uh, nine years. Transitioned out of corporate into um, entrepreneurship. And and when I transitioned into entrepreneurship, that is what I I transitioned into, um, which was influencing, you know, in marketing. And so at that time, nobody knew what influencer marketing was. There were no influencer marketing agencies. Um, there were bloggers. Yes. And bloggers were the influencers. Mm-hmm. And I didn't even know what a blogger was because I was in a corporate bubble. So I, I didn't know what was going on outside of the corporate bubble. So I had to learn what a blogger was. Yes. And I was like, okay, well, maybe that's what I want to do. You know, because I, I like doing that. I like sharing, you know, things that I do, places that I go. And you mean to tell me like you can, at that time you weren't really getting cash for it. You were getting free things. Mm. So you were, Mm -hmm. you might get a free trip, you know, a brand may give you, you know, free product. And that was like golden Yeah. at that time, because it was like, wow, you're getting free things that might cost hundreds of thousands of dollars and you get it for free. I mean, I've been on, you know, trips to Mexico, for free and stayed in five-star hotels and gotten flown there and all those kind of things. But really quickly what influencers began to realize is this is not paying my bills. Right. It's all fun the and games. The gifts are nice. The gifts are I, nice. Yeah. You know, but uh, if, Instagram eventually and t- Georgia Power going to want they, uh, <laughs> these shoes ain't paying. The Georgia shoes Power. is not. Yeah. Uh-uh, well, the shoes will help you walk up on out of there. <laughs> Because exactly. your light's getting cut off, but it ain't going to help you pay no bills. Right. And so um, I, I don't know who the first influencer was to do this, but, you know, when influencers started getting paid by brands, because somebody at some point spoke up and said, and they realized what their, what their influence meant to mm-hmm. these brands. They realized that when they were telling people, hey, you know, I love this drink or I, I love staying at this place, or whatever. They realized that when they would tell people that the consumers would go and patronize and then the business would make all this money and they weren't right. getting anything. They were just getting free product. And somebody mm-hmm. said, Oh, no, 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 no. Like 
right. you want me to do this, you're gonna have to pay me. And then they came up with, you know, they created their what, what they wanted. And when other bloggers started getting wind of brands doing that, everybody wanted a little piece of it. You know, mm -hmm. but again, there were no at that time, there were no influencer marketing agencies. And so the bloggers were their own agents and they were mm -hmm. creating their own contracts and they were cre they were negotiating their own rates. And gotcha. so we learned all of that in 2010, 11, 12. You know, now it's in, in 2024 or 2023, almost 2024. It's a lot more savvy. And the yeah. girls that are doing, the girls and the guys that are doing influencer marketing now and making money, they have agents. Yes. They don't even have to, they don't even have don't to have talk to, to the brand. <laughs> no. They don't have to all. negotiate anything. The agents are doing it all and they're coming back with the deals to, you know, to these, to these influencers. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have that luxury back then. And yeah. so um, when I got out of influencer marketing, you know, again, it was because of the frustration of not being able to get paid what I felt that I was worth. And I knew mm -hmm. that consumers were, you know, my community, I knew they were buying things off of what I was suggesting, but I wasn't right. getting paid for it. And it was just frustrating. Mm -hmm. And when I did start to get paid, it was having to wait 90, 60, 120 days to get a payment. It was just mm -hmm. frustrating. I was like, I can't do this. I got to go make some, some real money. And so, you know, started the business and started doing other little things on the side. But now what I really love is that now you can, it, a lot of things are just digital. You can apply to be a part of the agency. They'll check your credentials. They'll approve you. You, you get started on the platform and then you just go off to the races and do what you got to do. Put that little link out there. And when people click that link, if they buy it, that agency is just cutting you a check. You don't, you don't have to even go through all this red tape. So it's so much easier now. And I don't know, I just have always, I love sharing. Mm -hmm. I've always, I've done it. I've, I, like I said, I did it back in 2000, you know, 10. I've always mm -hmm. been sharing. Matter of fact, when I first left corporate America, my business at that time was called the Atlanta go-to girl. And my, mm -hmm. <laughs> job was to tell people where to go and what to do. Yeah. I was sharing all the, the fabulous things that you could do around Atlanta, all the events that you could participate in. I was already doing that Yeah, before yeah. it was a thing. Like I was before already was doing it. So I've always loved doing that. And now that I know that I can get paid for, I'm like, okay, sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to do, I'm already doing it. So the question is, is how real is this and how mm -hmm. are people actually getting paid? You you mm -hmm. alluded to it that, mm -hmm. you know, they connect maybe with through an agency or maybe mm -hmm. they just connect through a website that is kind of a portal for all of these different brands looking for influencers. Mm -hmm. um, they may be, do they buy products? Do products sent? Do they just have a code? And then it, like, Mm -hmm. or, or am I just suggesting things to people mm -hmm. and they, you know, how, do, how does it all link up? How does it all link up back to me? And how do I get my check? So all of what you said, could, it could be a combination of all of that. Um, it could be um, you, you or an agent pitching a brand. Mm -hmm. So let's just say, um, I don't know, let's just say um, Coca-Cola or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, it could be, that brand, that agency, or you specifically writing a pitch, sending it to the, um, the publicist or the, the marketing um, agent and coming up with an idea that's unique. Because the thing about it is brands need unique ideas. They have a whole marketing department, whole PR department, and their job is to create campaigns. The problem is though, um, these companies are not on the ground level of consumer thinking. Even though these are mm -hmm. people, they're thinking with a corporate mindset. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those marketing agencies within these brands are not thinking at the, the basic consumer human level. Mm -hmm. So they create mm -hmm. these grandioso marketing campaigns that, you know, are effective and, in, in, you know, some right. But the they goal. don't necessarily speak to the individual exactly. consumer that's using this product on a daily basis. It reminds me of what you were talking about with the hair market, with mm -hmm. with um, companies that are producing the hair but don't never don't ever use it. 
mm-hmm. you know, um, and not to say that these companies like a Coca-Cola or whomever aren't using their products. They certainly are, mm-hmm. but they may not know the practical applications mm-hmm. <laughs> that real humans in real home, in real towns, how they are drinking, enjoying, or using this product. Exactly. And, yeah, and that's yeah, why they're how it using the influencers life. because the influencer's job is to connect with a segment of consumers that is the brand's ideal segment Mm -hmm. of consumers. And so Mm -hmm. if you can really niche it down to segments of consumers that you've been trying to get to and the, the influencer that you're going to tap has a real human connection with that segment of people, then you're going to use that influencer because they will be able to humanize the brand Mm -hmm. to that community. And it will feel genuine and realistic versus it coming from the brand, the which we know you're trying Mm -hmm. to get us to buy. Whereas if I look at this influencer who I've already made a connection with, um, this influencer has brought me into their home. I have seen this influencer birth kids. I have seen <laughs> yeah. their kids grow from from in the womb till 10 or off to college or whatever. Like I have a connection with this influencer like in their family. Like some people yeah. just feel like I'm a part of this family because I've seen yes. it grow. So yes. if that brand uses that influencer who has a connection with this community, which I want to influence, I want yeah. them to buy my product. I'm going to pay this influencer to do whatever they want to do to sell my product to this, cons- this segment of people, because I want them as a customer. And, and that's what how it I works. just, yeah. And what, what a lot of what you said, um, got me, but what got me good is what you just said, which is whatever they want to do, mm-hmm. because there is a point where, <clears throat> you can go on TikTok or you can go on YouTube and see like an unboxing. If you watched mm-hmm. one clothing haul or mm-hmm. unboxing, like there's not a lot of variation. Mm-hmm. I unbox the clothes. Perhaps I'll try on the clothes. Perhaps mm-hmm. I'll decide, at, ask my viewers, should I keep it? Should I give it back? Whatever, right? Mm-hmm. There's only so much you're going to be able to do. Mm-hmm. But there's there ends up being influencers who stand out because they just decide, you know what? I'm going to do something different with this unboxing and maybe I'll I'll turn it all on its head or maybe I won't even do the unboxing at all. Maybe I'll just try on the outfits and then I'll let you know where we got it from and then you Mm -hmm. can go and buy it if you want or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's so many different ways that influencers then decide how they want to present it for you to get the number of clicks or whatever it is. Right. So that the consumer can then go purchase it. Mm -hmm. Um, You were telling me a story too uh, when we talked a few weeks ago. Um, And I wanted you to share this with with the audience, Um, just how you figured out um, how much you were talking to me about um, a YouTube video that you came across Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and realizing that and this was I'm thinking a while ago, but realizing that, oh. I need to step my game up <laughs> yeah. because there's money to be had because it's I think there, it. there becomes a point where you just start to, Oh, let me test the waters. Let me, let me put some, post a thing and see if it sticks or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then when did that realization come for you where you were like, Oh my gosh, this is, I could, yeah, there's so money. This is actually yeah. pretty recent. I was watching, um, you know, I've watched, I was watching a YouTube video, the YouTuber, her name, well, she's an influencer and she has a YouTube channel. Her name is Monroe Steele. And this is no secret. So I'm not telling like her yeah. business or anything. She actually has a video with this right. information, <laughs> but in the video, she received a delivery from a marketing agency that I also am a part of. And they sent her some flowers, a card, and like some some champagne glasses from Tiffany's. And she was like, well, let's read the card together. And so she opens up the <laughs> card and sh- the card proceeds to, to congratulate her on making $100,000 that month. And I said, mm. I'm sorry, mm. wait a minute, where's my remote? <laughs> <laughs> and I rewind, I, you know, hit rewind. And I was like a hundred thousand dollars, and this is from one brand. So this particular agency reps Zara, 
And so Zara recently created their own um, affiliate marketing portal because the one that's out there that a lot of people use is called Like to Know It. And Like to Know Mm -hmm. It, it was kind of like the first to roll out this um, shoppable link that helps people to get paid off of Mm -hmm. anything that a consumer will click and then purchase. So they are pretty much like the, the, um, you know, the ones who got that started. Mm -hmm. And so I guess Zara said, well, we're not going to pay you like to know it, to be on your platform. We're going to create our own platform because to be on the like to know it platform, brands have to likely pay. Yeah you know, like to know it, to be on the platform so that influencers can find them throughout, you know, within the list. And then that brand can set what, you know, whatever their rate is, their, their percentage that they will pay if a customer actually Mm -hmm. buys. So Zara said, "Mm, like to know it. That sounds cute, but no, (laughs) we're going (laughs) to, we're going to create our own thing. So they created their own platform. And, um, and so Monroe still was a part of that. And so she was saying, she's like, you know what, guys, I really haven't taken this. I didn't really start taking this serious until January. Mm. So she made a hundred thousand dollars and she just started taking it serious in 2023, January. And she made a hundred thousand and that's off of one platform. She has, she has plenty. She has, she, 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 she has YouTube. So YouTube also will begin, you can start monetizing your videos on YouTube after you get a certain amount of subscribers and after you get a certain amount of um, hours watched. So Mm -hmm. after your viewers watch a certain amount of hours of your videos, and after you start getting, um, you have the minimum, I believe, is a thousand subscribers. Mm-hmm. So once you get a thousand subscribers and you get all of these hours of watch time, YouTube will start to pay you for your videos because they start to include ads on your videos. Yes. She has 89,000 subscribers. Mm-hmm. So when she talks to her YouTube family and she puts those links in her description, 89,000 people. Yeah. who that decide i mean of course all won't watch at one time but right. still she her average may be you know 15,000 people that might watch a right. video so that's 15,000 people that possibly can click that link and make a purchase so she's making money hand over foot in different ways right And so just all the bags, all the bags. And so, and that's why, you know, she's able to do videos where she's, you know, unboxing Bottega and Chanel (laughs) and all of these things because she's getting paid very nicely. And she, prior to her doing this, she was, I believe, a, a, um, a physical therapist. And she quit her job as a physical therapist to, to be an influencer marketing full time. And so that just yeah. that's a small story just to show that it yeah. can work. It can work so if you many, give it attention. And so many of us, you know, and I think I said this to you that day, it's like, damn, you know, we all went to school, got the degrees, got multiple degrees, mm-hmm. still paint trying to figure out how exactly. to get our student loans forgiven. Mm-hmm. If we can. <laughs> if we can. And, you know, that menagerie of right. whatever. But, you know, when we see that, that people who did the same thing, who had Mm -hmm. the same path, right? Mm -hmm. We all went to school. Yeah. But then some of us said, you know what? I can do this Mm -hmm. work. And it is a lot of work. work. I'm not trying to say that it is not work because you do put time in to do do this. And we'll talk about the time that you put in. Mm -hmm. Um, But I can do this, which might be more enjoyable work for me. Exactly. Um, less stress. Mm-hmm. I'm my own boss. So mm-hmm. I decide when I, you know, if I need to hustle more or if I want to just take some time off or right. if I want to uh, pitch myself to get my vacation paid for because mama needs a break and I'm right. going to work on that vacation. <laughs> exactly. So figuring out ways to do this, mm-hmm. um, it's a beautiful thing. Now mm-hmm. for you, when did things, when did the light bulb go off for you? Because I know that like watching that video was like, oh, wait a minute, we're wrapped by the same people. Right. This is within reach. It is. When did things turn around for you with influencing? I think the thing about it is I don't think that I've ever not, I don't think that I've ever got completely out of influencing. Like, even mm-hmm. though I took a step it's back, for you. yeah, it's natural for me. You know, Instagram is, is my choice of, of platforms. And so I've, I, I've always remained consistent on the platform. I just never 
did it in a way where I specifically was aiming to get to have what I'm sharing monetized. Mm -hmm. And so I think what clicked for me was seeing that video where Monroe Mm -hmm. talked about she made $100,000 because I'm just like, I've been doing this. I can Mm -hmm. do this. I love doing this. You know, I just need to put in more effort and I need to be more, you know, hyper focused on this you know Mm -hmm. like you can't the thing about it is like you can't do it sometimes and Mm -hmm. then not you know like you have to be all in yeah monroe is all in like this is what she does this is her lifestyle this is this is this is what she does when she wakes up every morning this is her this is her job Mm -hmm. and so i i said i just have to be consistent with it because people want to know well before I really get too far in this with you, let me see mm-hmm. how serious you are. Right. You know, how long right. is this going to last? Is she just going to be posting about this for a month and then next month is just going to be sporadic and we're not going to see anything? Like, right. cause people don't want to get invested and wrapped up in what you're doing and then you just fall off. And so Absolutely. I had to create a schedule of like, okay, when are, when are you going to do your shops? When are you going to, you know, post things about, you know, whatever, you know, I had to be real strategic, create a strategy for it of what I, you know, when I was going to Mm -hmm. create content, I create content every day. I create Mm -hmm. content every day. And so, and multiple times a day, you know, because people keep coming back and they want to, you know, they want to see what, what you you're doing up. yeah right what, what you're you doing with, what you're you wearing mm-hmm. and I told you I think I don't know if I said this while we were on but like living vicariously through you over the last weekend was just <laughs> I mean the bee's knees I had the best time <laughs> following you over the past week because you were doing so many different things not that I had the energy or the inclination to do those things right. but I was like look at my girl go and let's see what she has on now what she's wearing mm-hmm. um, mama went to New York over the weekend with a never full the big Louis Vuitton <laughs> never full that was her luggage that's all she carried okay and I was like no that's not true Uh, uh-uh. but she pulled out everything that was in that bag and that's part of influencer marketing it's yeah. like the most random thing that you could think of mm-hmm. but I imagine you tell me if I'm wrong mm-hmm. I imagine that that would be a wonderful opportunity though mm-hmm. to pull out something in that bag Mm-hmm. that you could then connect to your like to know it page or Absolutely. to your Amazon storefront or wherever yeah. to say like this product saved me mm-hmm. on this weekend in this bag and blah, blah, blah. And you can have it too, sis. And a matter of fact, that's exactly what I did. So like I did like a little, you know, flat lay where I had, you know, my essential things that I had to have at Crow Fest, you know, which was my popcorn and my Dior mm-hmm. lip um gloss and my black girl sunscreen and things like that and all of that is on my storefront my amazon storefront like you go on amazon go. storefront and like all of my all of those things are listed and so yes it's you know you can list you can tag the the never fool you know it's yeah. like you 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 take every opportunity to tag because the thing about it is you don't know what people are in the market for buying right and right and and then too A lot of times, even if you sometimes like when you show things, it's not as effective as if you actually are using it or wearing it Mm -hmm. because you can you could post a picture and say like, oh, my gosh, like I found these shoes or I found this dress or these glasses, but people can't see themselves in it. Right. They right, see it and right, they're like, right. oh, it, it looks cool, it's but cute. it's like it look good on a hanger. But right. how that look on, or yes. even on the model, because things can just be deceptive. Yes, but the moment you put it on and you show it in action, people now get a better understanding. Like, oh, okay, that's so how that's you wear that, it, right? Mm-hmm. I could wear it like this, or I'm kind of her build, and you know, I like her. St- I, my style is kind of like hers. So when I see her wearing it, I can see myself wearing it. And so yes. it makes it real to them. It's just like when you're buying a house, you know, mm-hmm. if you've bought a yeah. house, if you go in a house that's empty, it might look nice, but you can't really envision how you're going to live in that space. Mm-hmm. But if it's staged, if it's staged, 
baby. <laughs> That's it. Where do I sign? I want this house. I can see myself living. I can see myself watching right. TV in here. I can see myself sleeping in here. Right. I can see myself cooking in here. You and by the, the way, can I buy the furniture that's in can here? Can I Because so I, I want it to look just like I this look just when I like come in. This. Yes. Because yes, I can't recreate yes. this. And that's yes. the same thing with influence and marketing. You can you can sell the empty house and that can be the pictures that you post. And maybe mm -hmm. somebody will buy it because they get the vision and maybe they won't yes. because they don't get the vision. Or you can you can show it staged. And yeah. that's why I do like what I call my try before you buys, where I literally go in store and I try on things that I love and show people how to wear it. Because I know that when people see it on me, they get a better idea of how it may fit on them. And they're and more likely is, to buy. And this is the thing that I love too. And this is, this is, this is why I was like, you have to come on and talk about this because there is this, this assumption then now because of the way that the game has changed. Yes, they used to send a lot of clothes or a lot of products or mm -hmm. a lot of whatever for you to just say, hey, look at me. This mm -hmm. is what they sent me, mm -hmm. blah, 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 go buy it, mm -hmm. right? But now because the game has changed, there has been this assumption that I have to buy this stuff mm -hmm. and talk about me having bought it mm -hmm. and then get the kickback on the end. Mm -hmm. What you just said is a true gem because it, what you have done, the buy, try before you buy or watch me try it before you buy it, mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. You show people products a lot of times that you haven't bought. That I have not bought and, and, I, and that I do not own. <laughs> and that you do not own. Right. You go in the store, try it on, take, capture a photo or video of you trying on that product mm -hmm. or, or just, you know, doing a little modeling job on mm -hmm. some shoes mm -hmm. and then link it mm -hmm. on your like to know it or link it wherever and still get, get the coin. And, and you haven't the spent a dime. Spent uh, nothing dime. more than your time. Because and the, you the, 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 what people need to understand is that you're not trying to go in debt over this. No, you're not trying that to go. In, the, it's the, you're not trying to purpose. go in debt. You're not trying to rack up credit cards. You're not trying to use uh, afterpay, Klarna, and all these things mm -hmm. to try to make money because there's no. You don't know if people are people. It, it's all emotional. It's mm -hmm. how you catch people. It's how is it's how you evoke emotion when when showing these things. Are are people going to be moved to buy it? So you can't go broke over going to buy every single thing that you recommend. You know, right. a lot of times I might create a, a wish list or or I might say, This is in my cart. Because it might be. <laughs> and it might be sitting yeah. in my cart for months until I decide to, you know, pull the trigger to buy it. It is in my cart. I did save yes. it to cart. I didn't check out. So I right. might say like currently in my cart and somebody may say, oh, just the, the fact that they know that I'm going to buy it. They yeah. want to buy it because they're like, oh, Tiffany's, she's going to have it. So yes. I want that too. So you don't have to buy everything. Like truly I buy things that I love. And then there are just some things that's just like, it's just not in my budget right now. I don't you know, need to buy this right now, but yeah. I still want to share it because I think it's a great product, you know, and yeah. somebody may be able to buy it right now. I just can't, you right. know, and you can still share it and you can still get paid from it. Oh my gosh. So what's been the biggest payday for you or the most maybe even surprising thing that you got paid for mm -hmm. that you weren't even expecting or didn't know was coming? So my most, my biggest payday and most surprising was um, when I went to Las Vegas, was that last month? Um, and I went shopping in a lot of the high-end stores and uh, I went into Gucci. I tried on a pair of platform sandals um, and all I did was try them on. I took a video of me trying them on in the mirror. I posted it to my likes to know. And I don't really post like higher end. I hadn't prior to this posted a lot of like high end <laughs> stuff because, you know, I didn't think that my particular community was into that. 
I don't mm-hmm. know why I didn't think that, but I just, maybe because I had not personally posted any of my personal high-end stuff. Like, even if mm-hmm. I did post it, I never brought attention to it. Like, you might have seen me, like, carry, you know, a Gucci bag or a Louis Vuitton or something like that. But I never said, like, oh, look at my Louis, look at my Gucci, look right. at my... I never did that. So I just assumed that my audience wasn't going to be, you know, isn't that type of audience. But I was mm-hmm. just like, oh, this particular I'm just going to post it because they're really cute. The shoes were super cute. So I was just like, I'm just going to post it. And I went back a few days later and I had five purchases on that shoe. And those shoes were $900. And the commission for those shoes was like $124. A piece? A piece. And, so I, and I did not buy them myself. I just posted the video of me trying them on and posted it in my stories. Yep. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have work to do. <laughs> <laughs> we have work to the do. The light bulb went off at that moment. I said, oh, don't count your consumer's pockets. Yeah. You can't get into other people's pockets and spend their money. Don't, they will don't spend assume it on what they, spend what they will or will not buy. Your job is to just show them. Yeah. Show them what's out there. Show them and what's I think out there. What I love about that too is, and I think this authentically, I think this about the podcast. I think this about things that I sell as well. Um, I think it always is better if I'm truly liking mm-hmm. the thing that I'm yeah. recommending. Like, mm-hmm. um, if it's something that I would actually wear or something that I'm lusting after, or even if I, I like, like you said, I really relate to that. Like, Oh, I love those shoes, but I ain't spending, you know, whatever it mm-hmm. is on them. But I just want to, I want to try them on. Mm-hmm. They look so cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Let me figure out a way mm-hmm. to get a second mortgage on the house. Right. Like, yeah, whatever it is. Right. But like, I don't necessarily have to break the bank in order to get the coin. Correct. Like that is a beautiful story and such an inspiration. And people, I think, think that they can't do this because I can't spend all that money. And what you just said is you don't have to spend a dime Mm-mm. to make it. Mm-hmm. in this particular mm-hmm. industry. So if someone are, so would you suggest that someone wanting to do influencer marketing or, or social media influencing or affiliate marketing or any of that kind of mm-hmm. stuff, would you suggest that they start with um, like a like to know it? Or mm-hmm. would you suggest they just go to those brands individually? Or what's, what's the would... best way to get into the game? I think that the best way to get into the game first before going straight to um, you know, the commission side is really building a community first, mm. like build your community first, you know, invite people into what you like, just mm-hmm. before you start trying to sell people on things in terms of like, oh, you should buy this or whatever, show them what you like, just mm-hmm. naturally, you know, just yeah. turn your camera on. You know, we do things all day throughout the day from cooking to putting on our makeup, to doing our hair, to put it, dressing ourselves, to running errands. You doing so much throughout the day that literally you could take a couple of minutes just to turn your camera on and just show people what you're doing, show people what you're interested in. If you're in Target and you're going up and down the, the aisle and you're putting stuff in the cart, show people what you're putting in the cart. Like, mm-hmm. let people know why you picked up the Flamingo shave cream. Why do you like it so much? Because this is what you always buy. Mm-hmm. And it's just yeah. the, it's just starting with just the natural progression of sharing, I think is the first yeah. thing. Because I think people want to get straight to the money, but don't have yeah. a connection with the audience first. So I think, you know, and I've spent, like I said, I've been on Instagram since Instagram started. So I've been sharing all of this time, you know, and I just have gotten to the point where I'm just like, oh, this is what I'm, you know, this is where you can go get this. Because before I wasn't telling people where you could go get it, I was just showing them. And a lot of people Mm -hmm. were embarrassed to ask where where I got it from, you know, Mm -hmm. because they didn't. And now you can just put a link. Now you can just put a link and they don't have to ask and because they don't really want to, because either they want to just get it without anybody knowing or they just 
you know, feel ashamed by asking because they think that you're going to say no. And so by you putting the link up, it just takes that guard down and it's just like, okay, if I like it, I can just go buy it. And so I would say Mm -hmm. first, just, you know, start sharing. And then, um, and, and also too, in that, the reason why I say that part too, is because when you go apply for, um, affiliate marketing companies, like, like to know it, you have to go through a vetting, a vetting process. So it's not Mm -hmm. like you just apply and then you just automatically get approved. Like they don't let everybody on the platform. So you Mm -hmm. have they when, before they approve you, they're going to look at your account and see like, are you already sharing stuff? Yeah. And so if you're not, then it doesn't really make sense to them as to why that they would let you on the platform because they're like, you're not even, you're not just naturally sharing things anyway. So like, why would we let you on? And so that's why I say, go ahead and just start sharing things, start doing, doing it because you like it, not because you're trying to like get paid for it. You know what I mean? Um, Mm -hmm. And then go to like, to know it and sign up for those platforms. And same thing happens with when you're writing pitch letters to brands you write a pitch letter to the brand the first thing that brand is going to do is they're going to go to your page to look at your page they want to see are Mm. are you interacting with your um, audience is your audience interacting with you when they ask you questions are you answering back are you leaving them on read Mm. and so if you can't show that you're already doing that they're not gonna respond back because if they give you product well if they give you product you're not gonna engage with your audience like you're if 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 a customer comes to you ask you a question about the product if you can't answer them just on some regular stuff on your page you're nine times out of ten not gonna answer their question about the product that i gave you for free so you've gotta like create the things that you want to like, don't wait for a brand. Like I don't wait for brands to come to me. I don't wait to like pitch brands. If I genuinely like something, I would create a campaign on my own just because I just like it. Mm-hmm. The brand may say, I'm like, Oh, we saw that you did this and it's amazing. That's how I got express. I got on with express and I had already been doing try before you buys in express. Mm. So I had already been sharing their clothes telling people, you know, the, you know, buy certain things, showing people how to put together, you know, outfits in express had Mm -hmm. already done it. So when it came to work with express, all they had to do is look at my page. There were different videos already on my page of me showing express before I even engaged them. I love it. I love it. You are dropping so many gems about uh, (laughs) those of us who would love to get started in this market. Mm -hmm. Is there, um, I know you said your 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 day is kind of you kind of have to be very diligent about your schedule, mm-hmm. making sure that you do things and you post every day. Mm-hmm. Is there kind of a rhythm to your day though? Do you have a okay, I wake up, I do this, and mm-hmm. then I go on Instagram and then I do this and then I go on YouTube and then I go out and I shop and I record all these things mm-hmm. and then I use Tuesdays as my day to like put together a board of when I'm posting everything like do mm-hmm. you is it that regimented it's not that day? regimented for me um <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that's regimented is really you know my lashed and hooked um you know mm-hmm. regimen that's you know pretty regimen but I also have employees so they know what what to do um yes the only thing that I would say that is pretty constant I have a lot of content in my phone so I have so much content in my phone that I have enough really to probably last me another couple months that I don't really Mm -hmm. have to go out and do anything. But because in fashion, things happen so quickly, new Mm -hmm. new products come out, the stores are getting things in every week. And so you want to stay on top of your game because you're also competing with other influencers who are getting out in front of your, you know, your audience as well. And so for me, I like to use Sundays and I usually will go to the mall on a Sunday when they first open and I will spend the whole day there recording content. I'll go in different stores and I will look through the racks for new stuff. You know, things that I haven't seen before, things that I Mm -hmm. haven't seen other influencers post before, things that are unique because a lot of times um, you begin to see a lot of the same things um, on the same Mm -hmm. influencers. And it's like, you have to figure out a way to, again, just like I talked about how to differentiate myself 
from curl cologne with lash and hood you have to figure out how am i going to differentiate myself from all of these influencers and that a lot of them are doing the same thing a lot of them are doing outfit of the day a lot of them are doing mm -hmm. get ready with me a lot of them yes. are doing you know cook with me a lot of them are just doing a lot of the same things and so yeah. you have to figure out like how can i be a little different not recreating the wheel but how can i be a little bit different you know and so for yeah. me i wanted to start exploring new brands that I hadn't heard of before, exploring uh, stores that, you know, maybe they used to be hot and they kind of died off, but maybe there, yeah. maybe there's some hot stuff in there. Like you haven't been in there, there in a while. So let's go in there and see, you know, right. what we could put together. Um, trying to find black owned designers and like, you know, a Nordstrom or a Saks, you know, and, and putting them out on front street, you know, shopping mm -hmm. boutiques, um, so, you know, you're always just trying to figure out like, okay, how can I be different? What type of, mm -hmm. of, of, uh, content can I create that I haven't really seen? So although yeah. I do love fashion, you know, I also, like, I just started a YouTube channel and I saw yes, that and I'm so excited about that. it. I'm so yes. excited. Hello, Tiffany. Yes. Hello, Tiffany. <laughs> and I'm actually right before this, um, this podcast, I was actually taping, um, a swim edition that I'm going to be doing on black swim designers. And, um, so I, I, I taped half of it and I, I've got three designers that I'm going to feature in this video. And I taped the first designer i taped all of those suits and i've got to put on these bathing suits get in front of the camera talk about them you know all of that yes and so um you know that's something that i hadn't seen i hadn't really seen yeah. like people talk about like black swim designers or if i've or if i've seen them talk about it, i haven't actually seen someone get in front of the camera trying on the different bathing suits letting people see like how it looks on a natural body a body right. who is still struggling with weight loss a body of a mom, you know, mm -hmm. all of that. And, and, and while I'm trying on the bathing suits, I'm also talking about some of my body insecurities that I have, you know, and mm -hmm. how I'm still trying to navigate that and how I'm going, mm -hmm. you know, doing the weight loss and all of that. So it's like, you know, just trying to figure out like how you can make your content interesting. How can you be a little bit more transparent than you were the last time to really let mm -hmm. people into your space? Wow. <laughs> Amazing. And, and this is the last question, but mm -hmm. I'm wondering how you do this. So Michaela Pabone of Dressed in Joy was on a few weeks ago okay. and she talked to us about um, her just toggling between her company Dressed in Joy mm -hmm. and then also the influencer campaigns that she's done mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So this conversation has been going on for a minute and we started it with her, um, but she was at a point where she felt like... Um, she needed to step back from the influencer portion of what she was doing mm -hmm. and pouring more time and attention back into dressed in joy mm -hmm. to grow that some more. Yeah. How do you balance the work? Cause you just mentioned that, like, how do you balance your, like the bread and butter mm -hmm. of latched and hooked yeah. with this other passion that you have, which is the influencer uh, marketing and making sure that you, and then you also are a wife mm -hmm. and a mom mm -hmm. and just a whole actualized human being, you yeah. know, <laughs> like how do you balance all of those and give each area what they may require mm -hmm. at any given time? Because it's a lot. It is. And I, I answer that question how I normally answer the question when people ask me, how do I balance things? And for me, it's, it's not about balancing. It's usually about prioritizing. And so, you know, you, you have to figure out what is, what ranks highest on your priority list at the time. Um, mm -hmm. It also, for me, you know, you have to build a team when you have a business. And so, mm -hmm. I've, again, I've been doing this for seven years. And so, you know, a lot of my team has been with me for at least three or four years. And so we're doing the same types of things every day. Mm -hmm. And so everybody has their job that they're supposed to do and so it does free me up to be able to have a little bit more time to do things like influencer because for the past seven years i've been building my business to the point where i don't have to work in my business i can work mm -hmm. on it and not necessarily in it um Beautiful. and so 
you know, I know that my packages are getting sent out because I have a warehouse manager and that's what she does every day. So I don't have to go. Mm-hmm. I used to go to the warehouse and feel so guilty and think that I needed to be packing orders too. <laughs> and then I was like, wait a minute, I'm paying her for a reason. I'm paying her so I don't have right. to be here. And it, but it took me time to realize like, you don't have to be in there. Like you're, you hired I her to do this, yeah. you know? But I imagine it's also really scary to hand over it the is. baby to. It is. And, it's about. allow somebody else to do yeah, that. But it's also too, I had to also let go of thinking that my business was my baby. Because Mm. a lot of times when you have that, when you think of your business as your baby, it's going to be hard to let go. You know, especially if Mm. you're a mom, you understand how that is. It's hard to let your Mm. baby and your kids go. Mm -hmm. And so I had to release the thought of thinking that my business is my baby. It's not my baby. It's my business. And so um, I hired people to do a task and to do a job. And so that's what I hired them to do. And I've got to let them do it. Now, if they don't do it, then I've got to find somebody else to, to do it, you know, Mm -hmm. but I can't coddle people in positions that I'm paying them to do because it, I cannot do my job. And my job is to raise money for my business and make money (laughs) for my business. And I can't make money for my business. If I'm there packaging orders, like that's not the best use of my time. And so, but also too, the influencing part for me is something that I love personally for me. And so I have spent a lot of time through counseling and, and, you know, like speaking with my therapist about doing things that please me and bring me joy Mm. and, and doing this influencer piece allows me to, to satisfy that part that I need to do for me because I like Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. And in turn, it allows me to be even, you know, more joyful in running my business as well, because I can I can do both, you know, and you don't have to overextend yourself either, even like in the influencer part, like I might post and then I'm, you know, I might not post for the rest of the day, but at least there is a post there that you can see, (laughs) you know, but you realize people want more. They want more. They see they get a little bit and they're just they're coming back like every hour checking did she post something did she post something and i might not you know that might be all you're going to get today and there might be another i'll leave you hanging but then it might be another day where i might post 20 things and it's like excessive so it's just you know you you find you know those pockets of time where you can like uh feed that 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 hunger of being able to do something that you love and then also being able to go and turn your attention to something else that you need to do I love that. I love that so much. And I love how you've been able to create this life that uh, that feels incredibly authentic Mm -hmm. and accessible, but also very much um, just chic in every in every single way. Mm -hmm. I so appreciate all the work that you've done um, for the hair community. For the black community and also in the influencer space, Thank because you. it is so important, I think, for us to see people who look like us mm-hmm. um, in this space crushing it. Um, because when I see you doing it, then I know that it's I can possible. do it too. Mm-hmm. I know that our listeners um, and viewers know that they can do it too Absolutely. as well. And that there is a very accessible and easy way in. Mm-hmm. You just have to do it and do what's, and you're not talking about spending a whole lot of money to do it. Just do what comes naturally to you. Talk about and really um, bring forth those things that you are naturally passionate about. Mm-hmm. These are the things that I heard mm-hmm. um, that you naturally love to do instead of trying to spend your time and wheel spinning your wheels promoting products that you don't Don't. really care about Mm -hmm. um because that will come across too Mm -hmm. um but yeah i can't thank you enough for having this fascinating conversation with me um let's talk about where people can find you because i need them to understand Mm -hmm. that yes mama's an influencer but she also has a business and she also has a youtube which we've alluded to as well so the YouTube is it hello dot Tiffany? No, it's just hello Tiffany. So it's if just you go, hello Tiffany. Yeah, if you go to uh, YouTube dot com and then backslash hello Tiffany, um, I should pop and up. And you guys, please, please realize, okay, we don't spell our names the same, right? Okay, <laughs> um, it is T I F F I N I. Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. T I F F I N I. Hello 
T-I-F-F-I-N-I yep. um, over on YouTube. Mm-hmm. And then they can also go to Latched and Hooked. Mm-hmm. And that is latchedandhooked.com. Yep. So latchedandhooked.com. Um, we're on the social media platform instead of the instead of and it's just the letter N. So latched and then mm-hmm. in hooked um, mm-hmm. on Instagram. And you can find all the inspiration on protective hairstyles. You can find our QVC deal on there. Yes. And um in our website, you know, to purchase things. And then I'm on Instagram threads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All of that as Tiffany. We Gatlin. can't forget threads. I know yes. threads. I'm 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 there. Um yep. and I'm I'm on those platforms as my first and last name. So Tiffany Gatlin. So Usually, if you just yep. spell my first name, I'll pop up because there's yeah, not a lot of up. people spelled T-I-F-F-I-N-I. So. Absolutely not. And it's interesting because I, I want to talk about this QVC deal mm-hmm. uh, because I know there is something. You have a couple of more of the... Um, the turban wigs. It? The, the turban yes. wigs. Yeah, we're down to our last supply of the turban wigs. Um, we have a little less than 200 left, which sounds like maybe it's a lot, but it's not a lot. Um, we only have it in black. We had black and brown. Our brown sold out like 48 hours after we actually went on QVC. So we haven't had brown since February. But we have um, black, which is like a natural black. So it's not like a jet black. It's just a natural black. Mm -hmm. It's it's a pre-tied turban wig. So literally you just slip it on like a hat. And it has a little drawstring in the back where you can loosen or tighten it in the back. So there's no, Perfect. literally no excuse for a bad hair day. You literally can just slip it on. You can leave your edges out if you want it to look more realistic. We have videos on how to put it on, how to take it off, how to accessorize it and all of that. And yeah, we're if you just, if you Google latched and hooked and QVC will pop up. Oh, I can't wait. Please go out and find that, honey, yes. because that seems like a dream come true it for is. those of us that just want to roll out of bed, yeah. brush your teeth, wash your face and go. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Tiffany, I love you. Thank you so oh, much you. for coming on Intimate Details with Dr. Tiff and talking so with fun. us about all the things. This is fun. You'll have to come back Absolutely. and we can talk about, she's alluded to her weight loss journey. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is a conversation, another conversation for another day. We didn't talk about it today because we would be here for two we hours would. and we are already doing the most. <laughs> um, but that is something that we can talk about. Oh, what I was going to say that I didn't say, and I was going to say it when we uh, did the introduction. Tiffany um, decided, you know, I usually ask my guests to send me a bio and send me a photo so that we can do all the promos and things. She knows where I'm going with this. Um, She sent me a photo and I was like, who is this woman? This is not you. It was her, but it's not the girl that's sitting in front of us today. She's like, well, you know, I, you know, the other pictures, my hair is blonde. They won't know me. I'm like, they ain't gonna know her. They're gonna be like, that's not the lady that you interviewed. If you don't send me another I need to picture. get updated photos. That's really the story behind it. I really need to get updated photos. <laughs> don't we all? Which I actually just got the the ones that I took of the blonde because my, my hair was platinum blonde and I literally took those pictures two months ago. And now my hair is not it's fine. blonde anymore. And so I'm just like, okay. You look I more know. like the blonde lady than the other lady that you sent me. Because okay? I was also like I probably 30 her. pounds heavier on that picture too. So it was just like. I mean, the things. I wasn't going to say that? it, but since you did. Yes. yes I was. Don't know her. Yeah. Okay. Don't know her. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm like, she's like, but they won't know it's me. I was like, girl, they ain't gonna know it's you anyway with this picture. And you look exactly the same up. as the girl with the blonde okay. hair. Okay? okay. So you know what? Just give them blonde. Okay. Just give them blonde if I that's what we have blonde. to have. And I don't know. I don't necessarily think you have to have any photos, but <laughs> you know, if I need, yeah, if you I feel it. like you need yeah, any photos, I like, who them. am I to tell you not to go for right. a photo shoot? But but the pictures on the promo are this lady. Please check out, share, like, subscribe. Thank you so much for tuning in. And yeah. just please continue to send your questions. Last mm-hmm. week, we did a Q&A episode, Ask Dr. Tiff. We got so many questions, and but we know that we didn't answer all the questions. So in the show notes um, on Spotify, you are able, there's a Q&A section where you can actually ask questions for Ask Dr. Tiff or for any of my guests, really. And we will do more Ask Dr. Tip episodes where we can answer some of all of your questions. So thank you so much for tuning in to Intimate Details with Dr. Tiff. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. We are on Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Amazon Music. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Am- uh, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, all the things. So thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next week. Ciao.